Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? Okay. So, any questions before we continue going over new things? Any questions? So next week is when the, when the semester is finally uh, fully in swing, right? Because next week is when the first quiz begins. So next week, you'll be learning material for week three. You'll be homeworking over material of week two. And you'll be quizzing over material from week one. Exciting times. Okay, so today's the 30th. And uh, what, we, what we did last time, the last thing that we did last time, was we did these two formulas. That A plus B all squared is equal to what? Very good. A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. And we also did another formula. We did A plus B multiplied by A minus B. And what is that one? A squared minus B squared. OK, there's one more uh, of these formulas uh, that are all kind of related to each other. So here, here it is. So a minus b all squared. So it kind of, kind of looks like both of them a little bit. It kind of looks like that one in the sense that we're squaring something. It kind of looks like that one in the sense that they both have an a minus b at any rate. So we want to get this formula figured out. So remember that squaring means repetition. So a minus b squared means a minus b times a minus b. That's what it means. And then this is a uh, binomial, and that's a binomial, which just means uh, you've got two terms there. Uh, what's, what's the name for the formula to compute the product of binomials? FOIL, right? This, one, this one's called the difference of squares. So for FOIL, what's the F term for this one? A squared. What's the O term? N negative AB. What's the I term? Negative BA, which I'll write as AB. And then what is the L term? Plus B squared. Right? Why plus, though? Because the negatives will cancel. So then plus b squared. And then can this be simplified at all? Yeah. yeah. So then simplifying it, it looks like a squared minus twice ab and then plus b squared. So here's yet another formula now that you're expected to memorize. Notice it's quite similar to this one. What's the only difference? between the one we just did and the one I'm pointing to. Right. They both have plus a squared plus b squared. They both have plus a squared plus b squared. The only distinction is that uh, that's a plus and that's a plus, whereas that's a minus and that's a minus. Otherwise, they're quite similar. OK. So let's have one. So for example, uh, 4w uh, minus 5z, and then we'll square that. OK, so what's playing the role of uh, A in this exercise? 4W. And what's playing the role of B? 
5z. So uh, we could just use that formula. So then it should be, uh, well, it'll be 4w, square all that, and then minus twice 4w, 5z, and then plus 5z squared. So that's just directly plugging into the formula. And now we need to carry this out. So when you square this, what do you get? 16w squared, and then minus, well, 2 times 4 is 8, times 5 is 40, so minus 40wz, and then plus 25z squared. Okay, any question about that? Alternatively, alternatively, you could sit, just say, well, I just don't really care for those formulas. I don't like memorizing these formulas. I don't like doing it. You might say that to yourself. Then you could just do it like this. You could say, well, 4w minus, uh, minus 5z all squared literally means 4z, 4w minus 5z multiplied by 4w minus 5z. You could just write it out like that. And then you could FOIL it. So let's do that. What would the f term be? Sixteen W squared. The O term? Minus twenty W Z. The I term? Minus twenty W Z one more time. And then plus twenty five Z squared. Which is after one simplification step, of course, that. So there's more than one way to achieve the result. Any question about this formula? <clears throat> so now, all of, these, uh, all of these three formulas here, this is, it's either a binomial squared, the product of two different binomials that happen to be conjugates, or another binomial squared. OK. <clears throat> well, what if, what if we don't have, was that the mic? Where is the mic? Oh, it's right here. Uh, <laughs> try and be real still here. So what if we have something like the following? Uh, 4x plus 3 and then multiplied by something like x squared plus 6x uh, plus 7. So notably, notably, uh, this this factor on the left is is it a binomial? Yeah, because remember that uh, a binomial means that there's two terms, and terms are the things that are separated by pluses and minuses. So there's a term, there's a term, four x and three. Is that one a binomial? No. No, right? Because there's three terms. It's a, so it's a trinomial, right? Uh, well, that means that in particular we can't use FOIL. So FOIL's just right out. Because FOIL only works for the product of binomials. So what are we going to do? We can't use the FOIL thing. Yeah? So we can't use it because I was always told you can use it. To some extent, there, there is a little, I mean, I could add some more parentheses and then FOIL it in that way. But I think it's easier to do, do, it some, do it a slightly different way. Remember, what is FOIL after all? FOIL was just a nice formula that covered up the fact that you needed to distribute three times and then perform a commutation. Let's just distribute, right? This one goes to that one, and that one, and that one. So we'll distribute to get 4x plus 3 multiplied by x squared, and then plus 4x plus 3 multiplied by 6x, and then plus 4x plus 3 multiplied by 7. 
And it's called distribution because we're saying, all of you, it's your lucky day. You all won a 4x plus 3, right? So they all got one. Now what? Mm -hmm. Now you distribute. This was distribution to the right. Now we've got a bunch of distributions to the left to do. OK. So uh, that would be, what's the first term that's going to result from that? 4x cubed, good. And then plus 3x squared plus, now the first term from this one will be 24x squared and then plus 18x and then plus, distribute the 7 in, 28x plus 21. Now, the, these are all pluses, uh, which means that I can drop all those extra parentheses and, and the, the, the result is unchanged. But if it, if it had so happened that, say, that one was a minus instead of a plus, then I'd need to, when I drop the parentheses, I'd need to distribute the subtraction, right? Okay. But they're all pluses. So now we need to collect like terms. So of all the terms, which one has the highest power of x? That one does, right? So are there any other cubes besides this one? Okay, so that's how much cubes we have. 4x cubed. Okay, the next highest power is squares, and I see squares right there. Are there any other squares? Sure, right there. So then all, and there's, besides those two, there are no others. So then that'd be plus 27x squared. And then now add the x's together. Uh, 18 and 28 is 46. And then add the units together, 21. Any question about this? <clears throat> so as a matter of terminology, to help us uh, be able to, to talk, speak fluently about uh, polynomials, uh, so when you have a term, say something like this, 5x to exponent 8, say, then this number right here is called the coefficient. Coefficient, yeah. So I could say, for example, this term right here, what's the coefficient? 46, and for, for this one, what's the coefficient? Four, right? And then something that's a little bit weird, what's the coefficient? 21, <laughs> it's 21, okay, good. So this number right here, this is called the degree. That one's called the degree of the term. So I could, I could say, well, what's the degree of uh, that term? It's degree 2, right? Except because that's a 2. What's the, de what's the degree of this one? 3. The degree of this one? 1, because there's an implied 1. And then what's the degree of that one? Zero, right? Because how many x's are there? There's zero of them, right? <laughs> so remember, x cubed is shorthand for x, x, x. So really, this is 4 times x times x times x. <coughs> so this one's degree 3. Yes? Couldn't you have a square y to the 4 the same term? Uh, well, then it depends on the way the question is asked. But it, if, so you're, you're saying, uh, what it sounds like you're saying is what if it looked like this, 4x squared y to 7? I changed the numbers a little bit, so if they'd all be different. What's the degree of this one? This one is degree 9. It's the sum of all of the individual exponents. Okay, but the degree of x is 2. The degree of y is 7, 
but the, the total degree of, of such a term is 9. Other questions? OK. <clears throat> Furthermore, uh, when you write polynomials, when you write polynomials, uh, the standard form is when you write the highest degree term first, and then the next highest degree term next, and the next uh, uh, highest degree term next. So threes are the highest, they come first. Degree two is the next highest, they come next. Degree one is the next highest, they come next, etc. So the standard form for polynomials is you write them in descending order of degree. And then three, the highest degree term is called the leading term. term and the coefficient of the leading term is called the leading coefficient. Very good. Any question about this? Okay. So now that we've multiplied things out with FOIL or a bunch of distributions and, and whatever, what have you, uh, now that we've done that, we're going to do the opposite of that. So what's the opposite of um, multiplying something out? You would think so, right? <laughs> uh, but actually, it, it's analogous to this. What if I could ask you, I could say, could you please tell me what's 3 times 11? And you'd respond with 33. And then I could say, now, given 33, I want you to tell me what its parts are. And what's that called when you say the parts of 33 are... 3 and 11? Factoring. factoring. Yeah, that, that's the opposite of what we just got finished doing. Factoring. Just like if I were to ask 3 times 11, 33, and then how do you factor 33? 3 times 11. Okay? So this is section um, 1.5 <clears throat> called factoring. Best to start with an example, probably. <clears throat> so, please factor the following. Uh, so, specifically, I'd like for you to watch this process. 6x cubed y cubed plus 45x squared y cubed. Uh, plus 21xy squared. Okay. So, uh, in this expression, I'd like for you to observe that there's three different kinds of things. Uh, and I'll break down the groups in this way. There's, there's these coefficients, right? 6, 45, and 21. There's x's. And all of the terms have some x's in them. And there's also y's. All the terms have y's in them. So for, for, for a brief moment, I want to ignore all of the x's and the y's for a moment. And I want to ask, is there some integer that divides all of the coefficients? 3 divides all of them, right? 3 divides all of them. Now, if, you, if, if we were to just take these two, uh, wait, is it? No. What is 9 times 5 is 45? Oh, okay, never mind. So it doesn't work. Well, 3 divides all of them. Can we agree on that? Okay. So now I have a question. If we were to factor out a 3 like that and then write the rest in there, my question to you is, is what needs to go into the parentheses so that, so that it's a legitimate, that we've done something legitimate? So what do we need to put in those parentheses? 2 x cubed, y cubed, and then plus how much? 15. 15, x squared, y cubed, and then plus 
seven xy squared. Okay, now a couple of observations. You might not be completely confident about why this is the correct thing. Well, the way to confirm or deny that this is the correct thing is to now take this three and distribute it in. If you distributed the three to the first term, what would you have? Yeah, you'd have that one, right? And if you were to distribute the three to the second term, that term right there, what would you have? You'd have that one, right? And similarly, if you distribute the three to the third term, you'd have that one. That's how you can confirm or deny that you did this properly. Okay, fine. Notice furthermore that among the coefficients that remain, 2, 15, and 7, is there an integer that we can factor out? Nope. Can't, can't get anything else to come out besides like a 1, right? But we don't do that because that'd be boring, I suppose. Okay? So we can't get anything more, more integers to come out. Now, all of the terms also have x's. So how many x's does this one have? Three. Because remember that this means, just to remind you, that that means x, x, x. And then I'll just do that for the x's. And then plus 15 x, x, y cubed. And that one means just x, right? y squared. So this term has x's, that term has x's, that term has x's. This one has three x's to give, this one two, and this one one. Okay, we want to take out the, ma the, the maximum possible x's, but everybody has to give the same amount, right? This one can give three. This one can give three. Uh, this one can give two, and this one can give one. So how much can we take out? Just one, because we have to hold ourselves to the rule that everybody has to give the same amount. Everybody has to give the same amount. So if we do that, if we were to factor out an x, now my question to you is, is what needs to be written in the parentheses so that what we've done is legitimate? Very good. So the first term would be uh, 2x squared y cubed. What would the second term be? 15x y cubed, and then 7y squared. Okay, now, the way you can confirm or deny that you've done this properly is imagine what would happen if you distributed the 3x back in. So notice that if you were to distribute the 3x to the first term, you'd have that term. And the same for all the others, right? If you did 3x times 7y squared, you'd have 21xy squared. Good. So now we did it with the coefficients, we did it with the x's, let's do it with the y's. So how much, how much y can come out? So this one could spare 3. It could spare y, y, y. This one could spare 3, y, y, y. But this one, oh, it can only spare 2, y, y. So how much can come out? Two of them can, right? So this would be 3xy squared. And then supposing we do that, this would be 2x squared y plus uh, 15xy plus 7. And again, if you were to distribute this in, you'd be back where you began. That's how you can confirm or deny that you did this properly. Now, have a look at what is still inside the round parentheses. Are there any coefficient, are there any integers we can factor out of the coefficients? Nope. Uh, can we factor x's out, out of here? Well, why not? Because uh, don't, uh, don't, don't these two have x's? Ah, right, but we said the rule is that all of, everybody has to give the same amount. Right, so this one has two x's to give, that one has one x to give. How many does this one have to give? None, right? None. So, we can take no more x's, we can take no more y's, we can take no more integers out of the coefficient. So, nothing more can be taken out. This thing 
is referred to as the greatest common factor. So all of these intermediate things, that is to say, like for example, three, three up here is a common factor. It's a common factor. And when we took just the x out, that was also a common factor. So those are called common factors. But this one is singled out as the greatest because nothing more than this one can be taken out. Okay, so when I ask you, there's, there's an exercise like this, factor out the greatest common factor, this is what I want from you. Now, when you've, when you've gotten accustomed to this, uh, you could probably do the x's and the y's at the same time. That's fine. Okay, when, you, when you're comfortable with that. But if, if you're not comfortable with it, then you can do it one category of thing at a time. Yes? Right, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, good. <clears throat> so now, I want to make a remark. So observe the following. If we have x plus a multiplied by x plus b, then we could multiply this out and collect like terms with FOIL. The f term would be x squared, the o term would be bx, the i term ax, and the l term ab. So that's FOIL. OK. Now, concerning the middle terms, the o and the i, for a moment, do these, uh, do these have a common factor? What's the greatest common factor of, of those? X. x. So let's factor it out of just those, just those ones we get x squared plus, uh, factoring out x there, plus ab. And now my question is, is, well, what do you need to write in there so that it's correct? What goes in there? a plus b. OK. So now. <clears throat> What we want to do is we want, so in time, just now, just now, we were going this direction. We went this way and that way, just now. What we want to do is we want to go in reverse, is that I'm going to start you here. I'm going to start you with one of these, and I want you to go this way and produce one of those. Okay, just like if, just like, 3 times 11 is 33. Now I'm going to give you 33, and I want you to say uh, 3 times 11, okay? but, with, but with polynomials. And to make this work, what I want you to observe is that really this is like a hide-and-seek game where you're looking for two numbers that are being added together, so these will be a sum, and, you're, and it has to be the same two numbers, and there's a product involved. A sum and a product. Okay, and there's one more uh, significant uh, matter, and that is, what is the leading coefficient of, of this polynomial? One, right, because that's the leading term. That's the leading term. And the coefficient of this term is 1, because there's an implied 1 there. So notice that the leading coefficient is 1. Now, leading coefficient being 1 is going to be such an important um, uh, happenstance, circumstance for us. So we're going to give that a name. And the name we're going to give a polynomial that has a leading coefficient of 1 is we're going to refer to this as monic. Monic. Like mono, meaning 1. So for example, suppose I give you uh, 
uh, x squared plus 10x uh, plus 16. And my request of you is I want you to factor this. So I'm aware that many of you are already more or less familiar with this technique, but bear with me for a moment. What we're trying to do, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find two numbers whose sum is what? We want their sum to be 10. And what do we want their product to be? 16. Okay. The, fact, the reason why we want the sum to be 10 is because of this number. And the reason why we want their product to be 16 is because of that number. OK. Well, let's, let's try it as blindly as possible. OK, two numbers whose product is 16. How about 1 and 16? What's the sum of 1 and 16? 17. Is that 10? Ah, oh, we missed it. So let's try again. How about, um, how about four and four? No, that's not right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, four times four is 16. What's the sum of four and four? Eight. Is that 10? Ah, oh, missed it. I guess we just ran out of choices. Is, is there another one? Okay. So how about two and eight? What's the sum of 2 and 8? Oh, incredible, right? So can you see that we found two numbers whose, whose product is this number and whose sum is the other number? As a result, <coughs> as a result, uh, what is the factorization here? What will it be? x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 8. So that is to say that this was the winner, right? Got a winner there. These numbers, this two went here, and this 8 there. OK. Now, if this seems a little bit mysterious to you, I invite you to look at this. How could you confirm that this is right? You could foil it back out, right? So I leave it to you to do that. So now let's try, let's try another one. So how about w squared uh, plus, um, say, 5w. So now I want someone to give us two, two integers, one of them positive, one of them negative, whose sum is 5. So can I have a volunteer? Two integers, one positive, one negative, sum is five. Okay, so negative 14. So did, did I just ignore the, the volunteer who, who kindly volunteered what I requested and then I said, forget your seven and negative two. <laughs> negative 14, did I just, no, right? What, what did I do with those numbers? I multiplied them, right? So now does everyone see? Okay, we want two numbers that satisfy what two things? Whose product is negative 14 and whose sum is 5. Okay, can anyone think of two numbers that do that? <laughs> okay, so that's a little bit forced. Uh, w plus 7, right, and then W minus 2. Good. Any question about this? Okay. What if I change the change it just slightly and I say, how about w squared uh, plus 5w minus 13? Right? It's almost the same, right? I just changed the 14 to a 13. What do you think about it? We don't, we don't like it. <laughs> well, we, w we would want two numbers whose product, uh, whose product is negative 13 and whose sum is uh, 5. Well, what are, the, what, are, what are the integer factors of 13? 13 and 1. And there are no others. By the way, numbers, 
uh, integers whose factors are uh, one in themselves only, those are special numbers. What are their names? <coughs> Primes, right? So, uh, well, how about 13 plus one? Is that five? No. Uh, well, perhaps 13 minus one. Okay, this also is not gonna work. What does that mean about this? So, so it doesn't mean it doesn't factor. That's not what it means. But it does mean that, that, that we're not going to be able to factor it this way, not easily anyway. Okay? So right now, what I'm, what I'm telling you is that, is that this thing that we've just talked about, it works, but kind of in a sense only when I make sure it's going to work. Okay? And, and as for this one, this one for now is just a mystery. Right? How, how would we do that? I don't know. The way that we're going to uh, deal with that is I'm just going to not give you any of those <laughs> until we come to the, the place where I, where I give you the tool to deal with those. Okay, you can factor this, just not with things you know so far. Good. Now, all of the polynomials on this page, including this one and this one, they're both monic, which, by the way, means what? The leading coefficient is one. So now let's have let's have an example where um, it's not monic because then then it's um, more entertaining. <coughs> so I'd like for you to factor five x squared uh, plus seven x minus six. And the first, the first thing I want you to observe is that it is not monic. Which means that that technique from the previous page is not going to work. Technique from the previous page is not going to work, but a slightly modified uh, technique will work. I don't know that one. I'm not sure. It's, I'm sure it's equivalent to what I'm about to say. So we still want to do the product sum thingy. We still want that. We still want that, except now, now the constraint is that we want the sum to be the middle number, the middle coefficient. So that, that's the same from the previous, c comparing it to the previous method. But now we want the product. Now, if it, if it were exactly the same as the previous method, we'd want the product to be negative six. But actually, we want, it, we want the product to be the product of the first and last number, okay, which is to say we want the product to be uh, the product of 5 and negative 6, which is negative 30. So where these things are coming from is that this number is that number. <coughs> and then we take both of these. like this. So what I want you to see is that actually this is exactly the same as the previous method. Why is it exactly the same as the previous method? Because what was the leading number on the previous exercises? It was one. So it was just like we were multiplying by one but we had forgotten. And it was always there. Okay. So now we want two numbers whose product is negative 30 and whose sum is 7. Well, how about um, negative 1 and 30? Will that work? Uh, let's check it carefully. Okay, no. So what's the, what's the correct answer? Very good. So negative 3 and 10, that, has, that product is 30. Adding those together, you get 7. So now we found a winner. We found a winner. Now the question is, is well, what are we going to do with this winner? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to say, okay, this is 5x squared. And now we're going to split this 7x in this way. We're going to say that, yeah, that's 7x's, but we're going to split it and say that it's uh, negative 3x's and then plus 10 more x's. 
So notice that, that these two are exactly the same. Because if you were to simplify this one, then you'd have the first one. So now that we have four terms, we're going to make two groups of two terms. We're going to operate on them independently. So now, concerning the first group, does it have a greatest common factor? What's its greatest common factor? X, right? Which is to say, we should be able to factor out an X okay, out of that one. And then how about the second group? What is its greatest common factor? Two. Okay, so my question to you is, is that, okay, as for this one, what goes in this group? 5x minus 3. And then plus, okay, what goes in this group? 5x minus 3. Okay, now please, someone say it. They're the same, right? <laughs> is that a coincidence? What a, what, a, what a lovely coincidence we've come to. No, it's not a coincidence. This is entirely by design. Notice that they're the same. If you had gotten here, if you had gotten to this position in this exercise and they weren't the same, that would mean that you've made an error. You've made an error somewhere if they're not the same. Okay, now, I'd like for you to imagine momentarily that I'm covering up, say, some Ys. I've got a Y under each finger there. That would mean that the term on the left is YX and the term on the right is 2Y. Would we be able to factor something out? What would we be able to factor out? A Y, right? If I'm covering up a Y, under each one, we'd be able to factor out a y. If I was covering up a w squared, well, we'd be, we'd be able to factor out w squared. If I was covering up a 30, we'd be able to factor out a 30. If I was covering up a banana, we'd be able to factor out a banana, right? As long as, as, long as I'm covering up the same thing. Am I covering up the same thing? Yeah. So. So what I'm telling you is that we should be able to factor out 5x minus 3 and get something. Now my question to you is, what is the something that goes in there? x plus 2, right? That x is what remains for the, for the left term. And then when you factor out 5x minus 3 from that term, what remains is this 2. Interesting. Any question about this one? Yes? On our written homework, do we have to write out all of that? No, right? So like, <laughs> so for example, here's me. I, I leave these in here so that you can remember I was asking a question. What gets filled in the blank? There's no need to write this line. Uh, you need not write yay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You, 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 could, you could make this much more compact. Okay. So any questions about this? Yeah, I got it. Okay, where? Here? Here to here? Yeah. Okay. So, again, I'm covering these up. What if I was covering up... Uh, a 5, so that it was 5x plus 5 times 2. Would we be able to, what would we be able to factor out? A 5. And if I was covering up a 6, we'd be able to factor out a 6. If I was covering up um, uh, a, a y to exponent 10, we'd be able to factor out y to exponent 10. The only thing that, 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 that's necessary to be able to factor something out is that I'm covering up the same thing. 
So if I was covering up two, a giraffe here and a giraffe here, we could, we could factor out a giraffe. Am I covering up the same thing? Yeah. So the, the 5x minus 3 can be factored out. Other questions? So the reason why this works is that 5x minus 3 is common to both. <clears throat> Other questions? OK. What time is it? All right. So now, here's me back in my office. And we're going to go with the fiction that I'm writing something that's invisible to you. OK, so I say to myself, OK, self, uh, 2x plus 1 multiplied by, say, 4x plus 3. I'll foil this out real quick and get 8x uh, squared is the first term. And then 3x and 4x is 7x. And then, uh, did I do that right? No. 6x and 4x is 10x. And then plus 3. So now here's my question for you. <laughs> I want you to factor 8x squared plus 10x plus 3. OK. OK. So then we want two numbers whose sum is what? 10. Whose sum is 10. And whose product is what? 24. Okay, two numbers whose sum is 10 and whose product is 24. Does 6 and 4 work? It works, right? So we got a winner on the first try. Someone was thinking ahead. Okay, as a result, as a result, that means that we can split this in the following way, that this is 8x squared, and now what am I going to write? Plus 6x, and then what? plus 4x, uh, and then plus 3. Now you might, I hope you have the, the brief hesitation to say, oh, she said 6x, and he followed her. But I, I started to write 4x first. What if I wrote 4x first? Would that mess it all up? Which is to say, what if you wrote these in the other order? Would it still work? We're almost done here. Thanks. <laughs> <coughs> it won't matter. So co convince yourself by doing it both ways uh, and see. So notice, if you were to factor out, what is the greatest common factor here? 2x. And if you factor 2x out of there, what do you have? 4x plus 3. And if, what is the greatest common factor here? 1. So you'd have another 4x plus 3. Okay. Good. So I'll see you on Friday.